Right, next, let's move on to the things that I want to discuss for today. Now, there are three things I uh, like to discuss, uh, you know, two, three things to look out for, for uh, 2024. The very first one is the Bitcoin ETF listing and the Bitcoin halving event. Now, following the resolution of two high profile cases, if you are not uh, following, you have not been following the cryptocurrency news, i let you know there are two high profile cases. The first one was the FTX bankruptcy and <clears throat> that is followed by the Binance 4.3 billion settlement with the DOJ. Okay, now both this news caused the cryptocurrency uh, to tumble for a short while. Okay, because it cracked it carried a lot of uh, negative, uh, you know, new, you know, negative feelings towards the cryptocurrency world, and since it's over, numerous cryptocurrency executives view this as an opportunity to progress and distance the industry from the problematic conduct of the two, uh, of its most prominent companies. Now, what the market is seeing right now is the observers are heralding the onset of a new bull run uh, basing their prediction on two significant events the first thing is the potential listing of a bitcoin etf in the us and the upcoming bitcoin halving these two news are you know the the go-to news for the time being and this is creating a lot of excitement um, because the earliest we could know if the U.S. Securities Commission would approve the first ever Bitcoin ETF would be January 10, 2024. That is just like a week away. Now, uh, there are some speculation that it may be even earlier. How early? Uh, before the end of this week. Okay. Now, do take note that past price behaviors of Bitcoin showed Bitcoin tend to rise leading to the halving but price movement has never made a new high before the halving event. So take note, <laughs> all the past three halvings, these were the uh, price action. Now, we need to see whether when they announce this um, Bitcoin ETF, has the price been priced in? If the rise in Bitcoin has been already priced in and when they announce the bitcoin etf <coughs> bitcoin can actually drop okay from that uh profit taking so this is something that you, everyone has to uh be on the lookout but um i believe you know it can still push a bit more <laughs> but whether it's going to break the all time high uh you know the 66000 plus area um uh, still we have to you know we still need to <laughs> in, in a way just double check triple check and, and see it's not too uh it's not that easy and uh not sorry it's not 66 it's 68,000 uh roughly about 69,000 I think or near that okay so um it's just it's still another like twenty four thousand away, so it's not something not something near. Okay, so we still need to wait and see. So this is the first one we need to look out for this year, two o two four. Now the second thing we need to look out, uh, for this year is the central bank rate cuts affecting the foreign exchange. Now, <clears throat> a lot of the central banks, uh, are predicting that they would be uh, not the central banks but the economies they are predicting that these central banks would be cutting the rates in uh 2024 the first is the of course the fed okay so the cme uh fed watch is predicting an 84.7 chance that the fed will be cutting rates by march 20th 2024 <clears throat> and an almost 100% chance of a rate cut by the second quarter of 2024 now personally unless there's something seriously bad going on in the economy right i don't think they will be cutting any rates uh in the first quarter second quarter probably okay but they may not cut 
uh, reads as much as the market is predicting. Um, later, I will let you know why. Okay, that will be the third part of it. A third thing that to look out for. Now, according to the majority of economies poll by Financial Times, right, the ECB, which is the European Central Bank, is expected to start cutting its rates by the second quarter of 2024 or so on the basis of expected falling inflation. So this actually jives with the Fed almost the same time. Now, as for the Bank of England, financial markets are betting the Bank of England will be forced to launch a deep round of interest rate cuts in 2024 amid the growing risk of a recession. Uh, uh, the first cut is expected as early as May. So this would also be the second quarter of 2024. Huh? So then finally, according to the projections of the Con Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, the RBA, which is the Reserve Bank of Australia, will begin easing monetary policy in Q3 2024. So this one is a bit later. So we have... Uh, probably three central three central banks, the Fed, e, the ECB, the BOE, doing rate cuts in the second quarter, and uh, RBA doing the uh rate cuts at the third quarter of two o two four. Okay, and finally, finally we have this news to look out for two o two four. That is the U.S. presidential elections and the U.S. stock market. Okay. Now, in past election years, the S&P 500 index has seen more positive performance than negative. Okay, now, this is just, uh, uh, I took out data and uh, took out from since 1972. Now, <clears throat> if you can see, this is the dot-com crash and this is the subprime financial crisis. Do both these are... Um, a very bad, you know, crisis that happened during the, uh, during the the election year. Okay, so unless we have something of this nature, a bad crash, then there is this probability that, uh, you know, election year tend to be, uh, positive towards the S and P five hundred index. Okay. And the average return, if a Republican is elected, is 15.3%. And the Democrat, 7.6%. And all election years, 11.28%. Right? So, now, I've mentioned that unless it is something um, not, you know, something bad ha happened to the economy. And what could that be is that, you know, this scenario here, this positive scenario is viable if job securities remain robust, characterized by abundance of job openings and provided that the unemployed and the new entrants to the labor force successfully fill these positions, then no issue. Now, if jobs data start to show a weakening trend, historical patterns may not be applicable. What we've seen so far may not be applicable. So, so, so this is the thing that we need to look out for. See how the consumers, because Jobs here, as long as it's stable, I think consumer data co uh, continue to be, you know, the consumers can continue to be strong and they can pay, they can survive on a day-to-day -day basis. I think all is fine and dandy and uh, the election year sh should see a positive return. But if something happens, they, um, <coughs> a consumer debt, that delinquency continue to rise, then they may spell otherwise because we need to know that um like student loans the return of student loans affecting about forty million Americans that affects the economy right so but you know let's that's why I said today's news would be important if we see um the wages stabilize you know wage growth stabilize and or or continues to grow that is still okay I mean you know you know what I mean. And so another thing to look out for, but it's a long shot, is the resumption of quantitative easing would give a significant boost, but ev um, but such eventuality appears unlikely in uh two o two four two five maybe two six I think probably you see that already because you still need 
inflation to come down from to two percent. Okay, so we are still not there yet. So, uh, let's not talk about quantitative easing as yet. But this is something that I uh, like. You need to put in, uh, you know, to to know about. Don't forget about this thing because this QE thing, um, is a a tool to really jumpstart the uh, bull run in the stock markets. Okay, so with that. These are the three things that to look out for 2024. Yeah, guys, so let's take full advantage of it. Next, let's move into the charts. 